Welcome to this video about the Pico 4, a newly released headset by Pico. And it's pretty great and has some awesome value. So to get into it, I did get this headset sent for free by Pico. And because of this, I cannot mention any competitors. So all comparisons will be made to the Pico 3 Link. And I think we all know to what headset that is comparable. So to start off, I want to show what's actually inside of the box. So once you unbook this, you will be greeted with the headset itself some new and improved controllers. And next to that you get the charger, which is 20 watts, pretty great. Some little booklets, because you need a guide on warranty. Don't think anyone will be interested in seeing those in this video. You also have a little nose cover for less light leakage around your nose. I haven't actually used it that much because the lenses are pretty close to your face, so there wasn't a lot of light leakage. And there also is a quick glasses spacer, so your glasses won't be touching the lenses. So one thing which is interesting about the glasses spacer, it's fully magnetic, so I can pull out the facial interface. With that also can come out the head strap, you can put it back in. And this time the, facial, the glasses spacer actually came with it. But because it's magnetic, it's very easy to swap out. And myself, when I'm testing my games, this is very easy to just pop it in and out. So you click it back, you click back the facial interface, and it just works. So now the head strap is loose, um, so I gotta put it back in. So that's pretty much it for what's in the box. But now the more important thing, what's inside of this headset? So first of all, it is very light. It is about 300 grams and the weight distribution is quite all right. So as you can see right here, I can hold it about in the middle and the front and back are about equal. This is because all the batteries are in the back and the hardware is in the front. And this is very comfortable to wear for even longer play sessions. Just one downside, the grip isn't that strong on your head. So if you move sideways really quickly, it will wobble. So even if I put it back all the way, put it as tight as I can put it on my head, when I go sideways, it's still like bubble sideways. And that can be annoying, especially for fitness games. Up and down works great. And even holding it backwards, the headset doesn't fall off, which is cool. Um, but again, I do want to say it does wobble a bit from side to side. Again, an actual gameplay I haven't noticed that much, but maybe you do with the games you play. So keep that in mind. On the inside, you also have the new pancake lenses. They are quite awesome and don't have a lot of glare and not a lot of gold rays, which is cool. And the displays in the back are actually really great as well. They are 2160 by 2160, which is a decent bump over the Pico 3 Link. And this does make the image a bit sharper. The FOV also slightly increased. It is not a major difference, so I don't notice it that much if I just pick up this headset and pick up another one the next day. But if I switch them side by side, I do notice the increase in FOV a little bit, which is just great for immersion. So inside there also is the XR2 chipset. That is the same as the Pico 3 Link, so sadly there is no upgrade in performance. Maybe it has some better cooling, but it probably won't be that noticeable. For the frame rate, this also has 90 Hz. You do need to enable it in the settings, so if you would get this headset, Enable 90 years as fast as you can because this is just a lot better. It also has color pass through with a single camera in the middle. And when I first received this, the depth was really all over the place. So it was really hard to see what was flat and what wasn't. Like my bed just was on the same height as my floor in the camera, which was weird. But with the latest software updates, it did get a lot better. And now it is fairly usable. I can walk around my room all I want and it looks pretty great. It is a lot better than the black and white preview on the Pico 3 Link. Now another feature which is new for the Pico 4 is the availability of hand tracking. It is not perfect, it is not that fast, and if your hands go over each other, it will block out one of the hands. But overall, it gets the job done and I can navigate the menus with my hands, and that's actually what I use hand tracking most for. Just quickly get in the handset, tune a few settings, open, whatever software I want, and then switch to controllers when I actually need them. So that's great and is working quite all right. So I'll on screen show a video on that and how it works. Again, it's not perfect, but this is the first version and I expect them to update a lot more in the future. All right, so now let's get into the comfort of the device, which is almost as important as the specifications because if it doesn't fit well, it's not the best. So it has a hard head strap and I do really like it actually. You can adjust it for fairly big head sizes and also very small head sizes with the dial on the back, which works quite all right. The back foam isn't the best. It is a bit hard in the middle and soft on the center and it doesn't grip my head that well. And that's why it wobbles, as I said in the past. 
When I move side by side, it just goes all over the place and the uh, lens is actually at my nose. Also, if you have a very large nose, I'm not sure how comfortable this is. My nose, thankfully, is acceptable, so I don't have any issues. But since the lenses are actually quite close to the um, nose insertion, for me, it fits perfectly, um, but do keep it in mind. The headset is not detachable and the speakers are integrated in them. So you can't just detach this and get another head strap. That kind of sucks. I kind of understand why. Um, and it does get the job done. The facial interface also is all right. Nothing to write home about. It just works. And after using it quite a bit, it does soften up a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty great. One thing I do want to say, the edges are fairly wide. And when I have them on my face, sometimes there's some light leakage next to my face and I can see behind me using the lenses. So if I wear the headset right here, right now it is not that noticeable, but, but sometimes there's a little space next to my uh, face. And because of this, I can see the reflection of the world behind me in the lenses. And since I notice this, it can be very distracting. So again, keep this in mind. And if there are any third party facial interface makers, this would be a great thing to make to have a proper facial interface without any light le leakage. Or maybe Pico will send out some new models in the future, who knows. So one of the biggest things for comfort are the new controllers and they are absolutely awesome. I have them high right here and the main difference over other controllers is the LED band is going over your hand instead of at the top. And because of this, you can easily reload guns or have hand interactions without the little LED band hitting each other. So again, that's pretty great. Of course, they can still hit each other but it's not that annoying as some other controllers. The size is fairly small of the handle, and because of the plastic right here, it is a bit on the smaller side, and I have pretty huge hands. For me, it barely works, but if they would make the ring a bit smaller, it would hit my pinky finger, and that would probably be annoying over time. Um, but right now, this is not an issue, so it is just the right size, and for smaller hands, probably even more comfortable than for me. The little safety straps go around the bottom. It did get me a while to figure out that this was how to put them on, um, but it works fairly well. I just noticed that it does touch my hands quite a bit if they are loose. But when I put them on, that is not an issue at all. And usually when I'm playing games for longer, I do put them on because new VR sets are quite expensive. So with the specs, you already heard that the, the, the visuals are improved a little bit. And that is probably the main selling point. It is not a huge generational leap, but it is just a slight improvement over the Pico 3 Link. And this one I actually notice. So again, if I compare them side by side, the FOV is a bit bigger on the Pico 4. So you can see more of the world. The clarity is a bit better because of the higher resolution. So the, so the screen is a bit sharper, which is always welcome. And I think the biggest improvements are because of the pancake lenses, because there isn't a lot of glare around bright objects. And sometimes if you sell a really bright object on a black background, there was a lot of glare, there were some gold rays in the lenses, and these are basically non-existent right now, which is pretty awesome. The Pico 4 also has proper IPD adjustment. In the software, you can set the IPD to whatever you want. And because of this, it is really easy to switch out to any IPD you want or quickly um, change it for whatever person you're going to give the headset to. And this is a lot better than the three-step adjustment in the Pico 3 Link. One of the biggest downsides of the Pico is probably the market, because the store doesn't have as much games as some competitors, but it is ramping up rapidly. There are many more developers supporting um, Pico, and there are some changes in game development, which I'm going to cover in a bit. And because of that, I expect many, many more games to come to Pico as well. So this isn't a change which will happen instantly, but I think over time, more and more games will be cross compatible and just work on any VR ads that there is. So expect more games in the future. I also want to say because of the market is just in Europe right now and in Asia, there isn't a lot of US support and the headsets won't ship right now to the US. I really hope this happens in the future because the broader the market, the more people can get the headset and the more games will release on it. So now a small list of features which I want to talk about. First of all, there's no headphone jack. I don't use headphones that often, but sometimes I do, and having a headphone jack kind of sucks because I can't use my headphones whenever I want. Also, there is no wired PC VR support, so if you want to play PC VR games, you have to do it wirelessly through Wi-Fi. There are some leaks that it will use wired for PC VR streaming over USB, 
But again, this is not confirmed, so don't take my word for it. I also haven't been able to use wireless yet because when I open the streaming assistant in Pico, it tells me to update the Windows app and there is no update for the Windows app, so I can't use it right now. Virtual desktop has been released, so if you want to stream wirelessly from your um, PC to your Pico, I do really recommend to buy virtual desktop because it has some awesome support and the quality probably is quite a bit better than the Pico Link streaming. So now why I actually got the headset is for game development. And at first it was a bit of a hassle to get it started in Unity because you need to download the Pico SDK and the input is handled differently than like almost every Unity plugin. So the input has to be coded itself and there were some issues like my thumb like registering. Because on other headsets you have thumb recognition where you put your thumb on the device and it will see it and then your thumb can well move in game. Um, this didn't work properly and the input was a bit buggy. But just a few days ago, as the SideQuest announcement was made, OpenXR now works in Unity for Pico devices. And I'm really excited about this because now you can just check the Pico uh, support in OpenXR, build it, and it works flawlessly with Unity inputs. So again, props to Pico for finally figuring this out. It really helps the development. Now I can use all my headsets for my new game, and that's just awesome. So not much more to say about that since I haven't used it that much, but the OpenXR support is really welcome and I will probably be using this for my future games as well to get my games maybe on the Pico store. So to summarize this, it is a decent upgrade over the Pico 3 Link and probably if you're new to VR, this could be one of the hats that you could pick up and play around with since it just has great support overall and the quality is a bit better than the competition. The major downside is that not all games support there and it doesn't have that many exclusives. But as I said previously, I do expect this to improve in the meantime. And as I said, I also expect them to improve the PC VR support. And if they do, that would be awesome since it opens up a whole new library of like all PC VR games. And with the new OpenXR upgrade, the new PC VR games also should support the Pico 4 easily, which is great. So it is a great headset, a decent upgrade, and right now the headset I'm probably going to use the most for my development and gaming. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or ask on my Discord. I will gladly help you out, and I'll see you in the next video. Can I do it like this? So here we go. Ooh. The box is now on the ground. <laughs>